Hello everyone, Crash here is RTA Motorsports. Today we're going to finally talk about how I recently got to drive the Porsche 911 GT Cup car around Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Absolutely insane experience. I'm super excited to talk about it. And then at the end we're going to give a wrap up as to what I think, how it compares to a simulator like the one that we have behind us here. Here we go. Welcome to RTA Motorsports. <laughs> wow! You can't see because our walls too big, but we're inside here. We are allowed to drive on the We have any Audi in the in the. Once we arrive to Dream Racing, I do gotta say it was mind blowing that they're. Their facility is actually inside Las Vegas Motor Speedway. It was absolutely mind blowing when you show up, you see all those cars out front, definitely several millions of dollars worth of exotics and race cars in that parking lot. And then also behind the wall lined up for their uh, race experiences. It was just absolutely incredible. It felt like I was a kid at a candy store and just that experience of pulling up and knowing that some of those you're gonna be driving today was absolutely crazy. Uh, the Welcome Center, being that everything is kind of going on in the world right now, they kind of, it seems like they're separating uh, their appointments a little bit. I don't know if it was just luck of the draw or or maybe that's just how they're doing it, but I was actually the only one in the Welcome Center when I showed up, uh, which was really nice, made me feel really safe. Uh, from the Welcome Center, once you register and you get checked in, we went straight to the classroom area. Uh, the classroom area, you watch basically on a big screen, not only what to expect uh, from the racing experience, but also uh, how to converse with your coach um, and try to have the most fun possible. They, they try to instill in you that this is an experience, but they want you to also have the most fun. So they also tell you how to speak to your coach as far as to try to get the most out of the experience so that way you're both on the same page as to what you're trying to expect from the whole racing experience right outside there they have two simulators kind of set up and you can see them right there they have basically fanatic gear on them they look like amazing simulators and they're running i racing because i racing has las vegas motor speedway built in so they use it um, for their training purposes with the car on the track. So that was pretty cool. We didn't get to do that, unfortunately. What we ended up opting to do was we got to do a ride along in a Maserati SUV around the track. And you could just see the types of speeds that Vinny was holding as he was explaining to me some of the basics as far as when we were going around the track. Here we go. right side near the curbing all right when you flow to the left then stop playing more speed you brake hold it you're gonna turn the release nice and easy exit in the third back on the gas flat on the brakes turn in as the wheel goes straight back on the gas maintain your speed very smooth as the wheel goes straight then you stop applying more and more speed up shift brake hold it turn release nice and easy Try to stay more on the left side of the track. If you go too much on the right side, you lose the angle of steer for the next turn, right? Brake, down shift, turn, release nice and easy. Ease in the gas, tires near the curving. See, as I flow to the left side, I stop applying more and more speed. Up shift, stay right side, up shift. I'm on fifth gear right now. Wow. In the end of straight line, I brake and I hold it, down shift. Down shift, we're gonna start turning and release the brakes nice and easy. Exit in the third, back in the gas again. Stay right near the curb again, no gas, no brakes. Let it flow, easy, back in the gas. Bring the car near the curb on the right side. When you flow to the left, stop by more and more speed. Brake, hold it, look the curb right there. You wanna be on top of it. Exiting, back in the gas, brake, turning. Release it nice and easy, back in the gas. Exit in the third, smooth. I'm only gonna go on the gas as the wheel goes straight. Yeah. Woo! This thing can move. <laughs> this thing can move. <laughs> I was not even fast. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay, you could just kind of see my, my poor wife, she was doing the best she could to try to really get some good video footage, but you could just see the G-forces that she was trying to compete with that Vinny was holding in an SUV at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. They are so knowledgeable, and you know, him being a pro driver, uh, it just, it was absolutely incredible that he was able to dance with that car around that track in such a fashion. And it was uh, a little bit, a lot, well, it was a lot to take in as far as really trying to get the information that he was telling me at the same time as being amazed that this car is able to do that on that track. So from there, what we ended up doing is I did a two car racing experience. We drove the Corvette C8 uh, with the Z51 package. Unfortunately, the video footage is a little bit, um, kind of messed up, it, it, I don't know why, it's a little purple. I contacted them, they're gonna look on their servers and see if they could uh, send us a proper backup. If you wanna see my racing experience or my uh, thoughts on the Corvette C8, definitely leave them in the comments below. If we get a clean footage of that, I might do another video on what I think about the Corvette C8. But after that, we jumped into the Porsche 911 GT Cup car and we strapped up the helmets. We were talking to each other via microphones through the headsets, it was absolutely amazing. So unfortunately, you're not gonna be able to hear us talking to one another until the end when I start coming down into the pits and slowing down the car a little bit. Car is very loud, I mean, it is, it is a race car. Uh, but you can kind of see from the mannerisms, maybe some sites where I might have made a mistake or three. <laughs> but everyone, uh, enjoy the video footage. Here we go.
All right, everyone, so we're inside the rig. So let's quickly go over the hardware so you get an idea as to where I'm coming from. We're using an AccuForce Pro or Sim Experience AccuForce Pro V2 wheelbase, uh, Fanatic Club Sport V3 pedals. Again, these shifters here are also from Fanatic, but that's not gonna be related to uh, this demonstration. We have a Derek Spear design dashboard. Um, other things that we're using is Sim Racing Studio uh, shake kit and that is a tactile transducer pad you kind of sit on so that's going to give me some more vibrations and we have a three degrees of freedom motion rig and that is from ProSimU. So let's get on the track and kind of see what this car feels like in comparison to the real thing. I kind of moved the car down the pits a little bit just to kind of get an idea as to when I was coming out of pits in the real thing and try to see what I was feeling and it is very similar only because the Sim Racing Studio Shake Kit or any transducer you may use is also there and present in my rig. So I'm getting a lot of those vibrations in the seat of the pants that I was getting coming down uh, pit lane in the real thing. So this is the iRacing version of Las Vegas Motor Speedway and the 911 GT Cup car. So I'm getting a lot of vibrations through the seat of the pants, which is nice because that's one of the first things that hit me in the real car. The steering wheel feel is surprisingly close. Um, we're using Sim Commander and they now have cloud tuning profiles. I did have to put the preset on high to get it to feel as close to the real thing as possible. That was the first thing that kind of hit me was I was surprised just how, how heavy the real steering wheel was. Normally we're used to si uh, sim racers hearing that we tend to overdo the force feedback sensations. And this is pretty darn close as far as the steering wheel weight because I was very surprised just how heavy the real car's steering wheel felt. Stay to the right here. Now I don't have a setup for this car, so I'm just running baseline setup, which is setting yourself up a little bit for failure. So I'm not gonna be doing any <laughs> track records here, but Without the brake markers in place like we experienced in the real thing, it is a little bit trickier finding your brake points. Getting a lot of telemetry through the rig, which is neat because this is similar cues that I was experiencing in real life. So a lot of the vibrations through the suspension, feeling the kick whenever I shift. It'd be nice to have a proper setup for this car and track, because I feel like I can't really get on the, on the brakes as hard as I was in the real, in the real thing. without locking them up, and that's a setup issue. I was also surprised how firm the brake pedal was on the real car. I might have to turn up my load cell sensitivity or make it less sensitive, requiring more brake pedal input on my uh, actual pedals. They're close and maybe with a proper setup it would feel even closer because I'm experiencing some lockup but so some of the things here are a little bit different of course because that is dream racing experience and they you know they set up the pits for their experiences and all that they have tents and everything set up so some things look a little bit different here um, but for the most part you know uh, well not for the most part definitely because of the fact that it is 
an iRacing laser scan track, it looks exactly the same as far as the layout goes. Now there's some infield things, there's some curbing that is a little bit different and maybe it's been updated since iRacing has been at this track. Um, to what I experienced on the track, to what I'm seeing here, uh, there was a curb on one of the inside turns that he told me to basically go over um, a right-hander that is not really present here. There's just a little bit of a uh, rumble strip, but not really an actual curb. So things are a little bit different visually, uh, but I do gotta say, as far as what I'm feeling um, in the rig, it is pretty darn close. Now, of course, you're not gonna experience the G-forces. Uh, one thing that he uh, basically was stressing is with your left leg, make sure you have it on the dead pedal and, you know, basically press it against the side roll bar so that way you could brace yourself for the G-forces that I was gonna experience. That's not really something I'm experiencing here at all, but as far as a lot of the car shaking, a lot of the vibrations, a lot of the kicks in the back, as well as because I have the uh, the actual transducer pad, I'm getting a lot of, a lot of that vibration whenever I was shifting, up shifting, down shifting, um, feeling the car kind of buck a little bit every time I shift, or in the turns, getting a little bit of that kick from slight loss of traction in the rear because the tires were still cold. Um, I, I'm feeling all that here, and it's surprising exactly how much I could actually feel. Maybe like a G seat from Sim Experience would slowly start to simulate that um, G-force feeling because it has flaps that comes in and kind of squeezes you on your sides. Um, but I, I am very surprised just how well we can simulate a lot of the tactile and sort of those sensations. The only thing that you don't really get is because you know you have a coach, you have them talking to you, you have that fear of wanting to really perform well, which you could actually simulate uh, that sort of sensation in iRacing really well when you're actually doing a race. That I, this is probably the only sim that really makes me anxious when I'm racing um, and fearful for basically not performing well. Uh, but in real life, you do have that you know fear of self hurting yourself. But even though I wasn't really feeling that on the track when I was doing the racing experience, I felt very safe with the coach there. So I, I can't really say that I was gaining or losing that, which a lot of real racers feel that way because they are driving the cars at 11 tenths. They're driving the car at the limit uh, when they are racing. We are not quite doing that in that high performance driving experience. Uh, so I can't really say that I, I felt like you know, my life was in jeopardy or anything like that. Um, so the amount of anxiety or anxiousness I would experience basically in that car was just basically due to wanting to perform well and be smooth and and get the information in from the coach. And I, I, I believe you could simulate that level of nervousness whenever you're doing an iRacing race. Um, so I can't really say one is more than the other, uh, but the things that I'm feeling here, the sensation of speed is actually pretty good. It's kind of hard when you're racing on a screen. I did try it in VR and we do have our uh, Pimax VR headset right here. Um, in VR, all the sensations are a little bit more magnified because you don't have a sense for where you are in the world around you. Uh, you are basically seeing the virtual world and all the the car's telemetry and everything like that seems to come alive a little bit more in a motion rig like this. And that's when I really felt like I was actually present in the vehicle and feeling that speed. Um, I don't think a wind simulator, because this is a closed cockpit car, is going to really enhance that too much for me. I felt, you know, this is pretty much as close as we could get in the rig. And I was impressed just how good this representation was to the real thing. Is it exactly the same? No. Again, I wasn't quite feeling all those little details that I was in real life of like, I could almost feel exactly what that sidewall was doing. When I drove up on the curb, I did feel exactly how smooth it was and almost like that the front tires were driving over glass. It just, it, there was so much information coming through the real car. This one gets close. It's, it's almost there and it's probably something I can tune into a rig, tune into the real fit, uh, into my personal cockpit. And it's probably something through software we could sort of mess with. Um, but just with the cloud tuning software, I am 
extremely impressed just how close everything here feels in the wheel. And then with uh, Sim Racing Studios motion software that I'm using, um, as well as their tactile transducer, or if you're using a butt kick or anything like that, just how close you can really get things to kind of simulating the real thing. So I do gotta say, the very first thing that I um, will say is if anyone's thinking of doing this, I paid for uh, a two car package, four laps each car, each car. And the Corvette, you know, C8 normal road car with a Z51 uh, track pack was absolutely amazing. And having that before we jumped into the race car, I felt was crucial to kind of get some practice laps, get some pointers, kind of get my mind tuned into uh, hearing the coach and hearing the instructions that he wanted to give. Once we jumped into the race car though, uh, the instructions were coming faster. We were moving a little bit faster into some of the turns. Um, I definitely wasn't at the level of pushing the car. My goal during that process was not to, to beat any lap records or anything like that. I wanted to be as smooth as possible and I wanted to have a good experience and I didn't want to you know, really anger or freak out the coach or anything like that. I really wanted to try to get as smooth as possible on the track. Um, and that was that was my goal and I felt like I achieved that. I got to experience the proper braking pressures and everything like that later on. But the one thing I do wish is that I ended up getting a longer <laughs> race package with the Porsche 911. Now, when you do these race packages, you could basically race for as long as you want, depending on what you're willing to, you know, what package you're willing to pay for. Uh, they do have some race weekend packages and things like that. And the interesting thing is on the way back to our hotel, uh, in our car, we met um, a driver, a pro driver that drives in the Super Trofeo series. Um, and he goes there uh, to Dream Racing. He races for their team and he goes there and he practices. And that day he did 70 something laps. And yes, he is a pro driver. Yes, he races for their team. But before all that, he was just a client. And just like many of these other drivers are. So you could go there, you could take it as seriously as you want. You could buy as big of a package as you want and race as long as you want. Uh, for four laps, I really just want to get the experience in and see what it was like. Uh, now I kind of wish I maybe got 11 laps or something to that effect. So that way I could really perfect things because now my competitive side kicked in and I really wanted to get a faster lap time. So that is kind of qu a quick summary as to just that sort of uh, of the packages and the experiences with the packages, but the experience with the car. The very first thing that kind of really uh, hit me in the face was how loud the car is. Um, I have a Chevy Camaro <laughs> ZL1. It's a 2018 uh, Camaro ZL1. Um, and that car, I have an aftermarket axle back exhaust and I have an aftermarket intake and you can hear that supercharger whining. And you know, when I'm on the track, the car is super loud, but this was a whole nother level. There is no sound deadening. I was wearing a helmet with earphones in to hear my, uh, my coach. And yet still it was just it was so powerful as far as the sound, it sounded amazing. Uh, really, I think if you're uh, racing with headphones with the volume at that level, uh, <laughs> it might be fatiguing for some, but that was one of the first things that hit me was just how really loud and, and just powerful everything was. You could hear all the rocks hitting from underneath, zero sound deadening anywhere as much weight reduction as possible. And that was just great. It felt like if you ever sat in a Lotus Elise that level of just no sound deadening everywhere. Um, but also when I was in the cockpit, I was surprised, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm not a small guy, I'm six feet, 230 pounds. I was surprised I was able to actually fit in the car and fit in the car pretty comfortably. I had to move that seat up a little bit uh, to really get that driving position. That was something that Vinny was actually pointing out uh, was to really, really get that driving position in place as far as getting up to the wheel. So when you're turning the wheel, uh, where your hand should be in line with your with your face and your arms still bent, stuff like that, uh, which was very important to not only feel uncomfortable, but once you start hitting certain G-forces, uh, certain bracing points, like with your left leg uh, against that frame really comes into play that you don't really experience on the sim rig. 
Uh, but everyone, hopefully that kind of explains my experience here. I do again want to say thank you to Vinny, my coach. He was super, um, he's super patient, very informative, and then kind of strict when he needed to be as far as letting me know when I was messing up and how to correct it, telling me to look ahead, letting me know when I was kind of messing up, but at the same time, very supportive and I had a great time. Definitely would try to get him again if I head back over there and do a longer session. So everyone, let me know what your experiences are if you ever got to drive a race car on a racetrack. So everyone, I want you to have a great day, have a great week, have a great weekend. Stay safe, stay happy. See you all next time.